Hello, this is Dr. Mears, and today we are going to be learning about trigmetric functions in our course, Analysis and Approaches, SL2. We're going to investigate the sine and cosine curves. So first, let's recognize which one is which. So the solid curve is our sine curve, that's y equals sine x. And our dotted curve is our cosine curve, which is y equals cosine x. Now, let's look at some features. The first one is that they have the same shape. They both have, they both are curves, they have a maximum and they go down to the minimum and then they come back to zero here. Um, the curves also have a maximum value of one. What do I mean by maximum value? That's the, their tallest value. So the tallest value for sine x, which is right here, is going to be at one. If we wanted to write that as a point, the y value is one, the x value would be pi over two. So that maximum value happens at pi over two comma one. All right, where does the maximum, and it also, you could keep going here and it's always gonna go up to one, it just happens at different spots. Where do we see our maximum value here for cosine? Well, for cosine, it also has a maximum value and I'm talking about that y value of one, but it so happens to be at zero one. And we also see that it's gonna happen here at two pi comma one, but still it's that y value that's still gonna be one. It just happens at different places. And it's gonna continue because they are curves and they continue to go on. Let's look at the minimum values. So they both have a minimum value of negative one. Minimum value is their lowest point. So you don't see them go any lower than negative one here. Now, if we investigated other curves, yes, you may go lower than negative one or you may go up to like point negative 0.5. But this is just for our standard y equals sine x and y equals cosine x. Their lowest point is at negative one. So in a point values for our sine x, that minimum value happens at three pi over two. And for our cosine x, that minimum value of negative one happens at pi. So again, while they both have the same y value for their minimum, it just happens at different places. Okay, if we translate the cosine curve, so if we took this dotted curve and we moved it horizontally to the right by pi over two units, so if I just shifted this to here, if I just shifted this all the way over to here, what's gonna happen is it makes an identical sine curve. It lands right on top of the sine curve, which is pretty cool. Okay, both functions also complete one wavelength in two pi radians. So if we look at the sine curve, it starts here, it obtains a maximum value, goes down, obtains a minimum value, and then right back to where it started. This is one wavelength. This happens in two pi radians. Let's look at the cosine curve. It starts up top where the maximum value is, goes to its minimum, ends back up top where the maximum value was. So this also happened in two pi radians. So they completed one, one wavelength. This is also called a period. So the functions are periodic, meaning they repeat the same cycle of values. So they'll just keep going. It'll just keep going up and down. Every two pi, you're gonna see it keep going. Now different functions we're going to recognize we're going to be changing the period we're going to be changing the height the maximum and the minimum and so let's start to get a couple of vocabulary words down for this so here's our characteristics of the graph so amplitude amplitude is going to involve maximum and minimum it's going to be it's going to involve looking at the max and looking at the min and it's actually half the distance between the maximum and the minimum. So our formula is to subtract the max minus the min and divide by two. What does that mean? If we look at this graph, if we cut this curve in half, and that would actually be cut in half, that's the x value for now. So the x axis cuts this curve in half. So how tall is it from the x axis to the maximum? Well, we can look, it's actually one unit tall. Okay, again, if we cut it in half, the curve, how, t how tall is it from the x-axis down to its minimum value? When we find it's also one unit tall. That's the amplitude. 
Okay, the period we just talked about, that's how long for one cycle. For this one, again, it's two pi. And we look at the graph. We can also look at the equation. We'll get to that a little bit later. But let's look at this graph and write down a couple of the characteristics. So number one, find the maximum. So remember, the maximum is that highest, highest point. So we're gonna look at for that highest point. So that highest point is here. So at the x value, this is pi over two. So the, it's going to be pi over two comma one. That's the y value, so pi over two comma one. And this, let's just put three pi over two, just so that we know, that's what I'm counting by everybody. Um, so let's find the minimum. The minimum is the lowest point, okay? So the minimum is here, so we look at x, so x is gonna be three pi over two, and the y value is gonna be negative one. Now, when we find the amplitude, we're using the y values, using y values. So try not to be confused. It's always gonna be these y values. Those are the ones that you're gonna use because we wanna know how tall from the middle the graph is. So we're gonna use the y values. So our amplitude formula says, take the maximum and minus the minimum. So we're gonna take the maximum minus the minimum. So one minus negative one and divide it by two. So we see that's two divided by two, which is one. So our amplitude is one, which we clearly saw here. We could do this without even using a formula, but formulas are always nice because you never know where this graph actually ends up being. You might need just to use the points. Okay, and find the period. That's how long one cycle. So let's look. So we start at zero, we hit a minimum, maximum, and back, so it's two pi. Yay, okay. Let's use these characteristics and let's just look at, whoops, just the sine curve. So let's just look at the sine curve because this is important. Remember the sine curve is y equals sine x. That is the standard sine curve. We call it the parent function. It's the, that's where everything starts. So let's look at our y-intercept. Here's y, here's x. Our y-intercept is where it intersects the y-axis. We find that at zero, zero. Okay. Now, the nice thing is I gave you degrees, everybody, because I, I didn't want you to worry about those pi radians, and I wanted you to see this in degrees as well. So let's find the maximum. You can find it anywhere. Usually we find the maximum, it's gonna be that first maximum positive towards the positive values. Remember when we were solving problems, we would be finding answers between zero and 360. So usually when we look for our values, we're looking at between zero and 360. So I'm just going to choose this maximum right here because that's where we usually look for a graph. So we find our maximum is going to be at one. That's our Y value. So it hits, that's the tallest. And for this one, it happens at 90 degrees. You could write one, negative 270, same thing. It's our one that's gonna help us to find the amplitude though. And minimum, so I'm gonna choose this minimum. Our minimum Y value is negative one, so it will not go below there. And we can choose that point, so it happens at 270. Again, if you needed a negative one, we still have the, the Y value as negative one, but it would just be at negative 90. So it just depends on where you want your maximum and minimums, where you need them. But again, it's the Y value that's going to help us to get the amplitude. So amplitude equals max one minus min negative one over two. So two over two, which is one. So for sine X, our amplitude is one. So that's how tall it is. One, 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 all ones, 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 never changes. Because that's the middle of the graph. If we split the graph in the middle, from the middle of the graph to the maximum is one, from the middle of the graph to the minimum is one. Okay, and our period, how long does it take to do one cycle? So if we start here, we hit a minimum, sorry, we start here, we hit a maximum, minimum, and then back to where we started is 360 degrees. Okay, so that's your standard sine curve. Let's look at what cosine happens to be. 
cosine curve. Remember our cosine curve is y equals cosine x. That is the parent functions where everything starts. I'm just going to put in here's y and here's x. Let's look at the y-intercept. Y-intercept is where it intersects the y-axis. This one's a little bit different. It actually intersects at 0, 1. Pretty interesting. Okay. Let's look at as our maximum. Again, I'm just going to say that our maximum is going to be in between our positive numbers here. I'm just looking there. This is where we're used to doing it. So where does our maximum happen? Well, it first happens here because it could be equal to zero. So our maximum is going to be at zero, one. You could also have a maximum here. It could be at 360 degrees and one. It's remember that Y value that it that matters because our y value is going to help um, is going to help us do our amplitude. All right, let's look at our minimum. So there's the bell. Here's our minimum right here. So our minimum happens at 180, negative 1. Again, our minimum could happen at negative 180. It's fine, but it really is that y value. It doesn't go below 1 on the y-axis. That y value helps us to get our amplitude. So 1 minus negative 1, max minus the min divided by 2. So our amplitude is 1, and that's exactly what we saw for sine. Um, so what's looking a little different are our y-intercepts and where our maximums and minimums actually occur. That's what's different. However, the amplitude is still 1. So that's still 1. Still 1. If we cut the graph in half, it's still 1. Okay, in our period, so we start up top at 1, we go down to our minimum, and we come right back to where we started. So one whole period is 360 degrees, which again is just like our sine curve. So sine and cosine are very similar. What we're going to be seeing happen going forward in our investigations is we're going to be adding a couple numbers. We're going to be multiplying a couple numbers, subtracting, and it's going to change. A lot of these characteristics, it'll change y-intercept, maximum, minimum, amplitude, period. So we're going to be adjusting these um, as we adjust and input different numbers into the functions. So this has been an overview of introduction of sine and cosine curves. Hope it helped.